Well, of course, one of the other big issues that we're facing with the pandemic is the lack of personal protective equipment, PPE, for NHS healthcare workers on the front line. The Doctors' Association UK are launching an app tonight to try to track the shortages of PPE and address them. And joining me now is Dr Samantha Bat rawdon an intensive care doctor and president of the Doctors' Association UK. Very good evening to you, Dr Bat rawdon Well, tell me about the app and what it is intended to achieve. Evening, Dermot. Thank you for having me on to talk about this. Um, so for the last few weeks, we've been hearing from frontline doctors about the severe shortage of personal protective equipment across the front lines. Now, we have been raising those concerns directly with NHS England, as well as in the press, to try and highlight uh, the situation on the ground. Things have improved, um, but certainly not quick enough. And doctors very much feel like they're putting their lives on the line without that protective equipment. So we've been raising the issue um, and we've identified the problem and now we just want to be part of the solution. Um, so I've been off poorly myself with COVID symptoms. I've been self-isolating and scratching my head thinking, how can we support our colleagues on the front line with this? So uh, the Doctors Association UK has teamed up with Mesley, who are also run uh, by junior doctors. And we've come up with this app now, the tech guys over at Messley are absolutely brilliant. And what it allows us to do, um, it puts the power in the hands of doctors on the front line. So every single day, they can submit an anonymous report telling us what they're short of, whether that's masks or goggles or gowns. And we'll be able to produce reports from across the UK about exactly where the shortages are. Now, we hope to feed that back directly to NHS England, but we are also overwhelmed by the generosity of the public who want to donate PPE uh, to doctors and now hopefully we'll be able to direct those supplies to where they need it most. Well, will members of the public be able to access the app or is it only for you professionals? Uh, so at the moment it is just a reporting app for professionals. So at the moment it's GMC registered doctors who will be able to give us a, uh, a report from the front line about where the shortages are. We hope that in future that data will be available to NHS England and indeed that we might be able to direct those generous members of the public who do want to donate PPE um, to places where the shortages are most severe. And it should help address the issue then of distribution because we heard it again today, didn't we, from the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock. We heard it last night from the Prime Minister. He talked about nearly 400 million items of PPE around. The Health Secretary uh, talked about uh, 45 million. Presumably there are lots of definitions of uh, PPE. But it's a the distribution. There's enough around, but it's not getting to the right places. Would you agree with that? So we, we have heard that line um, again and again and again. Um, the bottom line is that that personal protective equipment is, is not getting to that front line in some places and that doctors and nurses are having to improvise their own um, personal protective equipment out of bin bags, that GPs have had to put calls out on social media uh, to ask for donations and that some doctors have ended up going to screw fix or buying their own uh, respirator masks off eBay. Um, we don't know exactly what the issue is. The government has been telling us this is a distribution issue, but now we will have real-time data um, from thousands of doctors between DA UK, uh, the Doctors Association UK and Messley. Our platforms have over 70,000 doctors, so we are hoping all those reports across the front line will give us that national uh, picture and not allow the government to continue to hide behind distribution. Okay. I'm, I'm getting a sense from you, though, that uh, initially it's going to be used as leverage. You're going to use it to, well, beat the government round the head and beat, uh, beat uh, the NHS authorities round the head with it. I mean, shouldn't it be, and one would hope that they be interested in plugging into it and using it to improve their distribution system? Absolutely. And I completely hear what you're saying. That's not the intention of uh, the app at all. Um, certainly, doctors are really concerned. They do feel like they're putting their lives on the line. And this issue has been going on for weeks and it's not yet fixed. So I feel like it's very, very important that we do continue to lobby the government, that we do continue to raise these concerns. But now we want to be part of the solution. So absolutely, the overall aim is to collect that data that will hopefully be able to support NHS England's effort with Public Health England, give them access to that data to 
to see uh, frontline doctors and the government working together to make sure that this issue is fixed. Yeah, well, good luck with that. And while you're with us, because you mentioned it, Dr Batraw, and you talk about um, your own symptoms and your own self-isolation, I mean, testing is a huge issue for you and your colleagues. Have you had access to the test? Um, no, so unfortunately I haven't. Um, my little one is two years old and he was sick a couple of weeks ago. Um, he's in that very, very high risk group, um, but didn't get admitted to hospital, so he didn't get a test. On day 10 um, of our self-isolation, I then became poorly, but again, couldn't access a test. So I've been off work for a long time, which is frustrating because I know how hard my colleagues on the front line are finding things. Um, again, at the Doctors Association UK, we have been lobbying for several weeks now for frontline testing, and we have seen some positive noises come from the government. We know that frontline testing for NHS staff has been rolled out in several places. At the moment, um, I think doctors have been left in the dark about exactly how to access that testing, uh, who is eligible. We heard today from doctors that they've driven miles and miles to go to Chessington, for example, which is a frontline testing centre, only to be turned away because they hadn't made an appointment, despite there being absolutely no NHS staff in the queue. Um, so things are improving. We hope they improve quicker than they are. Um, and hopefully we will now see frontline NHS staff being tested and returning to the front line. Yeah. And um, as, as, as discussed, you heard the, the news conference with the health secretary. He wants to um, see 100,000 a day by the end of the month. Do you believe them? Do you think they can make that? Um, I hope so. Um, I am not sure. We have seen promises from this government on testing. Um, that haven't yet borne fruit. Um, in particular, frontline testing, we first had that announcement three weeks ago, and only now are we starting to see frontline NHS staff tested, who have, some of whom have been off for weeks and weeks. So, you know, I, I, I'm glad Matt Hancock is better, and we give our best wishes uh, to the health secretary, and we hope his, his plan or his five pillars do work, but the litmus test for us uh, will be when frontline doctors on the ground tell us that this is happening. Well, Dr. Bat Rawdon, uh, great talking to you. You get well soon uh, and best of luck with the app. And maybe um, while you're with us, you might share some of that data with us when it becomes fully operational. But thank you very, very much. Very happy to, Dermot. Thank you.